friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions. This is set P and we have covered uh, the five chapters of this particular uh, sample paper and it's time for us to step into the chapter six uh, which have two questions coming from the chapter six and uh, yet important to contribute as a part of the examination and we want you to be sure with every single question so putting a little more effort to talk about these remaining two questions from the sixth chapter and trying to solve them and understand what type of questions can be asked to you and how to solve them right let's look at the next question here question number 39 and this is one of its kind where we ask you to quickly uh, do the match the following and more importantly here we have to talk about the classification of the several items uh, that is the defects and uh, here we are trying to do the mapping so all you have to do is recall uh, the classification of the tools with that of the categories which was covered in the 6.1 and have to just relate them side by side so it's a very straightforward thing so keep it uh, simple do not complicate it you have to pick the one which you remember the best and then rest the option will do that for you for example if i talk about uh, the performance measurement and dynamic analysis as the word suggests that we are talking about dynamic analysis it's a hint for you that it goes to B and of course a dynamic analysis tool is one which is talking about the dynamic analysis and performance testing and measurement as well as dynamic analysis is done or it's a tool which is uh, under that category right so dynamic analysis tools are used for dynamic analysis so one goes to B at the same time, I pretty much understand that the test execution and the logging is basically something which deals with uh, measurement of the coverage because during the execution and logging of the results will tell you how much requirement coverage has been achieved. So these tools are, uh, you know, under the category of requirement, uh, sorry, requirement coverage tools will come under the category of the test execution and logging. At the same time, when you look at the management of the testing and the test wear, which is more importantly to talk about that this is one of its kind uh, where we talk about what exactly are the tools available which will help you to manage the testing related resources and one among them is defect management tool as well. So defect management tool D goes to three. And finally, uh, you obviously have the test design and remaining with the test data preparation tools. So yes, when it comes to test design, which is all about preparing the test cases, test, des test data preparation tool is one among this category of test design tools. So it pretty much makes it clearer to understand that how exactly the tools are classified under various categories and uh, we were able to map it and understand that how it could be simple with that information. So you may have to, this is all K1 level questions, you will have to remember and uh, understand that how exactly tools are classified into several categories. So the right answer here is C, one goes to B, two goes to A, three goes to D, and four goes to C, meaning the tools with the categories. All right, coming to the last question of this particular uh, set B and the sample paper B, that is question number 40. Which of the following is most likely to be used as a reason for using a pilot project to introduce a tool into an organization? Again, as usual, first bring up your understanding, what you have learned in the tutorials or the syllabus, and come to a conclusion that what makes a pilot project all about? What's the objective of a pilot project? So why should I go ahead to run a pilot project with a newly selected tool instead of rolling out to the rest of the organization at the same time? So let's start looking at each of the option. Option A says the need to evaluate how the tool fits in with the existing process and practice and determine what would need to change because a pilot project is all about evaluating that in the real time and certainly will be helping you to analyze these important aspects of it that how exactly a tool will fit into your current process. What do you think would be required to be modified when you are using this tool going ahead, right? But yes, let's have a look on the other options. B says the need to evaluate the test automation skills and training, mentoring, coaching needs of the testers who will use the tool. I think this is more of like uh, doing well before selecting the tool. This is not a part of the pilot project because pilot people, pilot project, 
people or the team starts using the tool rather than deciding whether you need a training or not. C. The need to evaluate whether the tool provides the required functionality and does not duplicate existing test tools. This should be again done prior to selecting the product or doing a POC, right? So before selecting or while doing the POC or before POC, you should be considering these factors uh, while selecting a tool from the market for evaluations. D, the need to evaluate the tool vendor in terms of the training and the other support they may provide. This is also to be done before taking the product, taking the tool from the vendor, not during the pilot project where you have already procured tool and given to one of the projects. So all other options, if we see precisely, the BCD is talking about those considerations which should be done before selecting a tool. But pilot project is something which is done while after procuring the tool and giving to one of the project to see the real time usage and the benefits which can be achieved and what extra things we need to do in order to make most out of this tool while working on it, right? So putting it up all together, the right answer is A, the need to evaluate how the tool fits with the existing process and practices and determining what would need to change. Now, Keeping it short and simple, that was all we had for the 40 questions from the set B. We will be getting started with set C very next on the upcoming tutorials and stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.